My, 25 female, ex-husband, 29 male, and I divorced a year ago after I found out that he had an affair son. C, 1 male. By that time, we already had A, 3 male, and B, 1 male. Since my husband had an affair, he lost any right to alimony or child support from my part due to prenup stipulations. He also lost his job at my dad's and the car. When he came back begging for me an opportunity, he disclosed that C's mom passed away during childbirth and we were the only family he had. I was hurt for his betrayal, but yet I still felt love for this man and didn't want to hurt a motherless child, so I told him that I would revoke his mandatory child support payments, because I don't really need them thanks to my dad, so he could focus on doing what was best for C and that anything he did, monetary, for our kids was welcome, but not necessary. The problem was that a few months after the divorce, he grew comfortable enough to ask me about how to take care of a child, to the point where he would try to leave me with C while I explained. After I realized what he was doing and when I confronted him, he admitted that he was trying to create a bond between us so his child could have a mom too. I immediately put C in his arms and said that while I was sorry for the loss of his mother, I am not willing to play mommy of his affair kid and to never bring the subject up again. He told me how unfair I was being because now that he's young is the perfect time to make an introduction and how awful it will be for C to see his brothers grow up with me. I felt pressured, so I took our kids and told him to contact me again through a lawyer for any future discussion. When I got home, I told my family what happened, and while almost everyone agreed with me, my mom said that I was a horrible human being because that child had no mother and that she raised me better than this. My dad tried to defend me as well as my sisters, but my mom said that what happened between my ex and I didn't have anything to do with an innocent child, and she hopes I do the right thing and I love the child. She's also pressuring me to buy things for the kid and make space in my home such as giving him a bedroom and all because she won't allow that I take my kids home and he's left there alone. But I said I don't want to involve myself with him, and now she's not talking to me unless I agree. Yikes, not the a-hole. Girl, I'm throwing you a parade for your fantastic boundaries and compassion. The dude broke your trust and your heart and took advantage of your gracious decline of child support. His decision to have an affair behind your back and then insist you be responsible to mother the child is abhorrent. Your mom sounds like she is grieving that he is no longer her son-in-law and wants everything to feel like a family again. She probably figures since the other woman has passed away, all harm is bygone and now everything can go back to the way it was. That's absolutely not the case. It's absolutely on your ex-husband to parent the child which probably has him beside himself with responsibility he resents. The child's loss of a mother is tragic, but no reasonable person could believe that your presence could right that wrong. His mother has passed away. No one can replace her. His dad cheated on you and has flat out admitted to manipulating you multiple times to make his life more convenient. The baby deserves better, 100%, but that doesn't obligate you to put up with worse. Not the a-hole. Maybe your mom should adopt him. That child is nothing more to you than every other motherless child in the land. Suggest, sincerely, that your ex get busy and find a loving and gentle new wife who wants to be a mother to his child. There are lots of women out there who would be interested. My infertile friend actually married a widower with three kids and admitted it was as much to be a mom as to be a wife. Several years in, they are very happy. Not the a-hole, not the a-hole, not the a-hole. I'm horrified at your mom's suggestions. It's an affair child for crying out loud. How would your mom feel if your dad suddenly came home with an affair child? Not very good, I'd suppose. It'd ruin the family, I presume. Now, your kids are still young, but if they were any older and they understood this, they probably wouldn't be very welcoming to this kid too. You are not a saint, and you do not owe that child and your ex anything. No, no, no. Even if the child did nothing wrong, why do you have to live your life with the proof of your ex's infidelity? It'd take a toll on you and affect your emotions. Backstory. My mom has me, 16 female, and my brothers, Nico, 17 male, and Shay, 18 male, with our dad. He died on my fifth birthday really suddenly. Mom was young and had the three of us, and she ended up meeting our stepdad less than a year later. I think it was about two years after my dad died that she introduced us to him as her boyfriend, and they married fast after that. At the time, mom and my stepdad wanted him to adopt us and to change our last names to his, so we could be a legal family and share a family name. We had said no, but they went through the process for the adoption. 
and when it came time for court, the judge took us aside and we spoke to him and expressed that we did not want to be adopted or to have our last name changed. It's not something I remember the best because at the time I was really upset, but the end result was the judge turned down the adoption request and the change of name request. My grandma said that the judge told my mom and stepdad that he didn't want to leave us feeling even more robbed of our dad by taking away his name and his ties to us legally. After all that, my stepdad tried so hard to get us to start calling him dad. He always called us his kids, his daughter, sons, etc. But he made for a real emphasis on how much he wanted to be our dad and how he wanted to feel us accept him in that kind of way. Mom would sit and tell us how we were blessed to have two dads. One in heaven who looked down on us, and one who was with us on earth and could raise us and be the parent we needed. She said it would be such a positive thing to embrace him as our dad. My brothers and I never did call him dad. Mom had more kids with our stepdad and they call him dad, but it was always a problem that we didn't. My oldest brother graduated last year, and he moved out soon after. He graduated early and there were some things that went down which resulted in mom and stepdad bringing Nico and me to therapy with them. Four weeks ago during therapy, my mom and stepdad brought up how tired he is of feeling like he raised us for nothing, because we never show him the love he believes he deserves, and we don't show him the respect he wants by denying him the title of dad. They said he was very close to leaving. So mom asked if either of us would consider trying to be more open to the idea. Would we at least refer to him as dad to others, even if we don't call him dad to his face? I said I would never be okay with that. My brother too. Mom cried, and my stepdad, well, I think that was a breaking point for him. It feels like their marriage is all but over, and deep down, I know both of them blame me and my brothers. I hate seeing my mom so upset. My stepdad can't hide the fact he's angry with us over it. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. They tried to force the adoption down your throats when none of you wanted it, and now he says this is a deal-breaker for the marriage? If that's true, he never really wanted a marriage. He just wanted to be a dad. Which, considering they had kids together, he is. And if he considers leaving because his stepchildren aren't calling him dad, while he has real children who do, I don't know, he seems weird. Not the a-hole. You shouldn't raise kids for gratitude or reward. You should do it because it's the right thing to do. Your stepfather should have realized a long time ago that you had boundaries when it came to parenting. He was not entitled to be your replacement father. He was disrespecting your wishes and your father. That sort of disrespect was never going to earn him respect. He should have wised up a long time ago and realized that his vision of a perfect family where he is the beloved replacement dad was never going to come true. He should have stepped back, actually considered what you wanted, and learned to respect your boundaries and wants. The fact that he didn't do that and instead continued to try to push this relationship is his problem. He didn't have to do that, and he shouldn't have done that. Now he's messed it all up. And the fact that he's considering leaving because you didn't respond well to his constant pushing proves any love he had for you was conditional anyway. That is not how a parent should act. I know that the title might be confusing, and I know this is some Jerry Springer level stuff, so bear with me. My mother-in-law was my brother's PhD advisor. Without going into a bunch of unnecessary detail, they ducked around. He got her pregnant, and it was a huge shock to my then fiancé and I. I was totally devastated for selfish reasons, but it just felt so icky. I was mad at mother-in-law for not knowing better. I was mad at my brother for having a relationship with a woman who had treated me like trash. I was just mad that I was going to have a sister-in-law who was also my niece. Mother-in-law dumped my brother and said she had just been having fun and would never think seriously about a man significantly younger than her. My brother was devastated. He was very much under her spell and thought he was in love with her. Mother-in-law wanted to keep the baby, but said she thought he should have the right to opt out, and she thought it would be wrong to ask him for any support, emotional or financial, and encouraged him to not sign the birth certificate. He had some contact with his daughter, we'll call her Grace, but mother-in-law didn't want him around too much, and he was in a dark place in his life. He got another advisor, but his motivation dropped and he graduated but wasn't happy with his work. He then began to realize how competitive the market was and felt like his PhD was useless. I also think he associated the subject too much with her and was just disillusioned with everything. He settled for a job that has nothing to do with his degree and that he doesn't like, developed a little bit of a drinking problem, and saw Grace here and there. Mother-in-law got a boyfriend her own age who Grace loved. She began to call him dad and they married eventually. 
I have a hard time being around any of them for what mother-in-law did to my brother. I make the occasional obligatory visit, but honestly, I hate her. Grace never wanted much to do with her bio dad, but in the past couple years, he's gotten his life together, married a very sweet woman, and had a baby. Grace makes no effort to see him. She is 15 now, and all Grace cares about is that her a-hole stepdad is going to buy her a fancy car next year. However, she sometimes makes comments about how my brother is a real dad to the baby. We went to mother-in-law's house last night for one of those super not fun obligatory dinners. Mother-in-law wanted Grace to pack her lunch for her tournament the next day and told her to put the phone down and come do it. Grace replied, hold on, I'm talking to my sperm donor. And I snapped and told her she is a spoiled brat and how dare she call her father that. She doesn't know anything about what he has gone through and he does love her, but she only cares about what her stepdad buys her. Mother-in-law immediately yelled at me and asked me to leave. She says I crossed a huge line and I owe Grace an apology. Yes, the a-hole. What happened to your brother is sad, but I think you have a lot of misplaced anger towards your niece. She's 15 and made a comment that, in her immaturity, she thought was funny. She doesn't understand the nuance of the situation and she should not be blamed for having a strong relationship with her stepdad, as he was the one raising her. Yes, the a-hole. Grace wasn't raised around or by her bio dad. Only towards her teenage years do you describe your brother to have gotten his things together. While that may be great for him, that doesn't mean Grace is obligated to spend time with him if she doesn't want to. Genetics doesn't make a parent OP. The man who is with your mother-in-law was there her whole life. If that's who she shares that connection with, you have no place whatsoever to not only call her a spoiled brat, but then insist her father is your brother and not the man who raised her. You owe Grace and her father an apology. Grace is a child and in her eyes your brother wasn't there for her. You have the full picture. She does not. She makes no effort to see him. She is now 15. Exactly. She is 15. She has no control over that. So, in her eyes, her aunt came over for dinner. She had to talk to her bio dad who has not been there for her, wasn't in a good place when she did see him, and now has a new family that he is better for. And now her aunt, an adult, is yelling at her because she spoke a little rashly about it. You are an adult. I understand your anger at mother-in-law. What she did was a misuse of power over your brother, and I don't trust that crap at all. But Grace is a child. You don't take your aggression out on a child. Yes, the a-hole. I, female 36, lost my late husband years ago. I'm now married to my husband of two years, Jason. He loves his stepkids, nine and six, and does a lot of things for them. However, he started doing something lately that I find weird and unacceptable. Whenever one or both kids does something wrong, instead of giving out proper punishment that we both agreed upon, he'd grab a photo of my late husband and start addressing it, complaining about the kids' behaviors while the kids stand and listen. He then proceeds to tell them their dad is mad at them and is disappointed they did this or that. I'm aware of the psychological impact this type of discipline can have on them. The kids would sometimes feel so guilty they'd start crying, then ask if dad is really disappointed in them because their stepdad told them he told them that. I told him to knock it off several times, and last night I blew up on him after I found out he told my daughter that her dad said he'd disown her if she did X thing again. I told him he was going too far and causing a huge damage to the kids and tainting their memory of their deceased father. He was like, this way they'll learn, and if they really love their dad, then they'll behave. I said, listen, the kids love and will always love their dad, and what you're doing is causing damage to their love and remembrance for their dad. He said I was overreacting, but I argued that I already warned him. He said something about him being a parent too, and that I have to respect his parenting and stop trying to act like the cool parent and step up instead. He then went outside and stayed gone for hours. My sister said I'm being unfair to my husband and that he clearly cares about the kids. Otherwise, he wouldn't care about them correcting and never repeating their mistakes. Am I the a-hole for my reaction? Not the a-hole. That is a really, really ducked up way to discipline, and it could cause them serious issues in the future. The love that your deceased husband has for your kids and that they have for him should never be conditional on their behavior. For him to imply that is so, so messed up. Not the a-hole, and honestly, I'm not usually given to hyperbole, but this is so sick, twisted, and shockingly aggressive that I'm going to go so far as to say that parenting arguments aside, he shouldn't even be allowed to be alone with your children, 
at least until this is resolved, and possibly not ever again, given that he doesn't seem to understand how messed up this is, or doesn't care, and you need to get them into therapy yesterday. He's not parenting your children. He's traumatizing them, repeatedly and deliberately. You don't have to respect his parenting, because this isn't parenting. It's psychological and emotional aggression. And the fact that he is berating you to get on board and suggesting that you are trying to be the cool parent when you demand that he stops speaks to either a serious personality disorder or a fundamental lack of understanding of how serious what he is doing is. Either way, he is not a safe person around children, period. You are not the a-hole, but you will be if you ever leave him alone with your kids again. And you don't get them help to undo the damage ASAP.